I recently had the opportunity to go hands-on with Divinity Original Sin 2 at PAX East. Holy crap! I'll just say it better, I'll just say it about it. Now I've talked about Divinity Original Sin several times on my channel, so it's no secret or no surprise that I absolutely love the game, and in fact Divinity Original Sin 2 was purposefully made my first appointment at PAX, because I just could not wait to go hands-on with it. And one of the things I love so much about Divinity is the combat, and how you can gimp and grief your opponents in many different ways. You can freeze them, you can stun them, you know, if there's a, a pile of water on the ground, a pile of water, a puddle of water on the ground, you can shoot an arrow or cast a spell that'll stun your enemies um, because, you know, electricity and water, they don't mix. Or you could cast frost or freeze and then the puddle of water will freeze and then your enemies will freeze or trip or fall. And you can just do so many different things, blow oil puddles into big flaming balls of death. It's just, it's amazing. So back to Divinity Original Sin 2. So yes, I got to go hands-on with it at PAX East and the demo they were showcasing was a PvP demo. Now, I'm not about PvP, I don't play PvP, it gives me too much anxiety and stress and oh my god, I'd rather just like lose myself in a PvE world. Um, however, with that said, there were a lot of really cool new combat uh, techniques and some tweaks to the system in the PvP, emo PvP demo that I can only assume will be in the um, main campaign. I, I actually didn't get clarification on that, but I'm pretty darn sure it would be because otherwise that would be strange. So anyway, yeah, I want to talk about that stuff because it got me really, really excited. Oh God, where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start? So the first thing that I noticed is that action points have been dramatically reduced. And what I mean by that is now instead of having like, I don't know, like 20,000 action points at your disposal, uh, in my PVP demo, I only had like six. Um, but that's okay because now spells only take about one to two, maybe three action points to execute. That said, walking still takes up, it seems, just as much as it does in a Divinity Original Sin 1. I, isn't that always so awkward when, you, when you're when you talking about a game and it's sequel and they're the exact same games, I mean titles, except for a one or a two, it's like, Divinity Original Sin 1, is that now its name or is it just Divinity Original Sin? Because if you, you know, a year from now, or two years from now, when Divinity Original Sin 2 is out, you're like, yeah, I played Divinity Original Sin, and they're like, oh, one or two. But you could clarify by saying, yeah, I played Divinity Original Sin 1, and then they're going to know exactly what you're talking about. Kind of like Xbox One and Xbox. Anyway, wow, derailment. Derailment has occurred. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, action points have been reduced, but it all seems to work out just fine. It's not like you don't have um, enough action points to execute certain attacks and chains and combos and all that kind of stuff because it actually feels like I had more opportunity to cause more damage because if I wanted to shoot an arrow, for example, I believe that only cost one action point and so I had four action points so I was able to shoot off four arrows at my enemy which was really nice and that was kind of hard to do in Divinity Original Sin 1 unless you had saved up for a few turns. So I'm all aboard the, the smaller amount of action point train. Woo, woo, okay, I'm awkward. Another new addition are source puddles. And again, I don't know if these are going to be in um, the main campaign or just PVP. But anyway, source puddles are these like metallic looking puddles of silverness. If you've ever played Dragon Quest Eight, and you know the metal slimes, like imagine one of those have like melted and now they're on the ground in Divinity Original Sin 2. That's what they look like. Anyway, you walk up to one, you stand on it, you can absorb the source and then that unlocks uh, special abilities that you have in your um, action bar that you can only access if you have source points. So instead of taking action points, they take source points. Easy enough. It's worth noting that you can also get source points from another character. You can kind of steal them or if you stand atop of a corpse, my understanding is that you can absorb source through a corpse. So there you go. And um, the skill that I used with my source points was called Acid Spores. I believe it was called Acid Spores. And it was a kick-ass move that would have, according to the creative director, completely annihilated my enemy. However, I fucked up and my enemy was standing under cover. And so I didn't, didn't get to hurt him. That was a, a blue balls and I just kicked my camera. Speaking of my enemy hiding underneath cover, verticality, is that even a word? I don't even know, but we're rolling with it. Um, please, a big role in combat in Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, for example, like I said, my my homeboy, my enemy was freaking hiding under cover and so I wasn't able to hurt him. Um, if you are standing atop a scaffolding, for example, and you have an enemy below you, you get a damage bonus. 
So basically you want to be King Turd of Shit Mountain and climb all of the high things and get a better range. Which really helps plays in with the archers in Divinity Original Sin 2 because now they have actual arches. Fucking yes! If you've played an archer in Divinity Original Sin, you probably know what I'm talking about. When you have your archer here and enemy here and then there's like a pillar. My face is the pillar. It's like they can't, my archer can't shoot the enemy because my face is in the way. But wouldn't actually, uh, you know, archer be able to like arch an arrow and like stab any stab stab, right? Well, you can do that in Divinity Original Sin 2 now, which is amazing and awesome because that's more realistic and it's not like the archers can only shoot in a straight line because that's not realistic. So yay, Larian, thank you. Another new thing coming to Divinity Original Sin 2 is the ability to bless and curse surfaces. This is pretty cool. So how it works is, for example, my warrior, my badass warrior, who ultimately was slaughtered, um, was standing in a, a nice big pile of fire. I don't know how she ended up there, but she just kind of walked through fire and decided to stop and hang out in the middle of the flames, and that's what she did. Um, not good. However, I was able to bless the fire, and what that does is it makes it so the fire will heal you, which is great. It becomes like blessed fire or blessed fire. I don't remember the exact, it, the exact name of it. Um, so that was nice. I was like, oh, this unfortunate situation has now turned fortunate. However, you can also uh, grief surfaces, and if you were to curse fire, it then becomes necrofire, and then all these like thorns like come out of it, and it's like oh, all evil looking. And if you bless something, it turns all like like light blue and holy looking. So that's kind of a, a new fun twist on uh, ways to gimp surfaces and surroundings around you. Gimp manipulate. That's probably a better word. Trying to think of other things here. So, uh, ex okay, here's something. So the warrior, um, you can use Phoenix Dive, which is now a teleportation skill that the warriors have, which is which is great because before, you know, they'd have to use the teleportation scrolls, but now they'll have an actual skill. And it's cool because then when you land, it like puts like out a whole bunch of fire. It's like, Poof. that's probably why my warrior ended up in fire earlier. I don't know what happened with that whole situation. Oh, and, and this is exciting and fun because I think it is because I'm weird, but it looks like Divinity Original Sin 2 will still have and retain that charm that I found in Divinity Original Sin. Um, you know, with the, the quirky one-liners and just kind of the tongue-in-cheek humor and the cheese ball of the intentional cheese ball of it all. Cheese ball, intentional cheese of the game. Yeah. So, for example, you can summon Margaret the Slug to come help you during your your time of need, and you can also summon a really cute but somehow demonic-looking were sheep to help you as well. So, uh, you know, I was out there fighting my uh, my enemy with Margaret the Slug. Yep, she was my, that was my ride or die right there. Missed that slug. But yeah, guys, I mean, other than those details and those specific things that I told you, it very much still looks like Divinity, plays like Divinity, and it's just kind of an upgraded version of Divinity. And again, this was all discovered in the PvP demo because that's all they were offering. But I'm just assuming that most, if not all, of these cool uh, uh, tweaks to combat are going to be available in the main campaign where it's going to be PvE and all that stuff. And holy shit, I cannot, I cannot wait, you guys. It's going to be fucking incredible. And the game is just, it looks gorgeous. And it's just, oh my god, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little misty. I just talking about it. So that's all I have about this. If you have any questions, maybe I can answer them, maybe not. Let me know. And if you want to know how I how I did in my PvP demo, well, I got absolutely slaughtered. Absolutely slaughtered. It wasn't pretty. But I, I kind of try to pretend like I, I died on purpose. I'm like, oh yeah, I just I just want to see what would happen if I walked through all that fire. And that's kind of probably why I died. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.